Coming up on Fulton Today, South Fulton residents get first-hand information about the future of their community and the options before them. And what happens now that a special grand jury has been requested for the Fulton County Jail? We'll take a look. Fulton Today is next. From the Government Center in downtown Atlanta, you're watching Fulton Today with Shania Chavis. Welcome to Fulton Today, everybody. I'm Shania Chavis. Fulton officials provide South County residents with information on annexation, incorporation, and legislation that could impact their community. FGTV's Jolene Butts Freeman has our story. In the room filled with South Fulton residents, the District 7 Commissioner explained that this meeting would be about the facts only. Facts about incorporation, annexation, and the legislation currently before state lawmakers. We all have to come together as a family, look at all these things, decide what we're going to do, and we're going to move forward. House Bill 704, which will be debated during this General Assembly, if passed, would incorporate the city of South Fulton in Fulton County, provide for a charter for the city of South Fulton, and provide for a referenda, amongst other things. The county's deputy attorney explained the legislation to the crowd. So if a new city gets created over time, the law provides for a transition period where the county would keep providing those services until the city's ready to take them over, and they might take them over right away, but they've got up to two years to take them over from Fulton County. Most residents wanted to understand the financial impact of the options meant for them. County finance teams explained. The new city would also have to begin to fund public works and public infra infrastructure costs. Um, and by that I mean facility, building and facility maintenance, acquisition and maintenance, um, road and bridge maintenance and repair. And then the tax commissioner and tax assessor weighed in as well. And unless the military changes, or unless the uh, homestead exemption changes, you will see no other change. If you have a current homestead exemption, you will keep that homestead exemption. If you uh, have a senior, you'll keep the senior. The only thing that would happen is if, like uh, a couple of the other cities, Sandy Springs, Atlanta, both have a separate homestead exemption. Some residents left saying they had far more information to make their decision one way or the other. Uh, I got out the meeting tonight, um, the cost effectiveness that it's going to be for uh, us to stand up a city. Also, what services we'll be able to transition from the county to us as a city. If state lawmakers pass the bill, the final decision will be put to the South Fulton residents when they settle the matter at the polls. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Jolene Butts Freeman. Thank you very much, Jolene. Now we'll hear more from that district commissioner in our district by district segment. Meanwhile, Fulton officials are also speaking out after learning about the recommendations by a Fulton grand jury concerning the Rice Street Jail. FGTV's Priscilla Ortega has details now on what, if anything, the county plans to do next. When the Fulton County Grand Jury impaneled in November and December, it fulfilled its indictment caseload. Then it did something few others had done in the past. We had an opportunity, we felt, to provide more benefit to our, um, our community through doing investigations. The jury began two special investigations after learning its right to investigate any county government official or operation. Jurors then decided to look into the Fulton County Jail and the Fulton County school system. This is about the third time we've had grand jurors who made an extraordinary effort to examine uh, one of the departments or offices in Fulton County. The grand jury was impressed with the school system's investigation and its five-year plan. However, it was concerned with the Fulton County Jail's lingering issues and the federal consent decree it has been under for years. A lot of positive work has been done. There's been, you know, 114, I think, of 116 um, consent order items have been addressed, but there's really two outstanding, and that is the capacity of the jail and the staffing. The grand jury recommended a special grand jury be impaneled to investigate staffing, the purchasing of the Atlanta jail, the long stays of incarcerations for some inmates, and how mental health cases are handled. Some issues Fulton officials say are already being addressed. So the Board of Commissioners is doing our best part in terms of, again, uh, coming up and supporting ways for 
uh, overcrowded conditions, inmates who are not in beds to be outsourced and put in other facilities, and then number two, uh, funding the, the sheriff's department at the level that they will be fully staffed. The court has 30 days to petition for a special grand jury, and if a special grand jury is formed, they will have the power to subpoena and make public recommendations, but they will not be able to make any definite changes in policy. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Priscilla Ortega. All right, thank you all very much. Fulton housing professionals are helping nearly two dozen families living in a hotel to find someplace else to live. Health and code inspectors found violations at the Majestic Lodge in South Fulton County. Families were living in the hotel as a permanent residence. What we've been asked to do, Fulton County Housing and Human Services, is to come in and assist the families with uh, relocating to more permanent, stable uh, living arrangements. The Office of Emergency and Transitional Housing has been assisting with apartment referrals in hopes that these families can get approved and take advantage of county rental assistance. Our main concern, of course, are the children. We want to make sure children uh, remain in school. So the county is working with the Fulton County uh, Public School System to uh, make sure these children stay in the schools that they are currently in right now. Last year, County Environmental Health Services cited the Majestic Lodge for code violations like bed bugs and roach infestation. A new year brings a new savings opportunity for first time and current homeowners. April 1st is a date to file for important tax exemptions. Homestead exemption reduces the assessed value of your property by $30,000. In order to qualify for homestead exemption, you must own the property as your primary residence and you must occupy that property on January 1st in the year in which you apply. You must own it, you must occupy it as your primary residence and you must file an application. All three of those have to be met to receive homestead exemption. All homeowners are eligible for basic homestead exemption and even more deductions like personal property returns. Now, if you've already applied for homestead exemption, you don't need to reapply. You can get more information about the homestead exemptions and property appeals by contacting the tax assessor's office. Looking to volunteer in 2014? Well, tutors are needed to help county students in math, science, and reading. The Office of Children and Youth needs volunteers for its Kinship Care Homework Assistance Program. The program is open to children who are being raised by relatives. Tutorial sessions will be held at the East Point Library on Wednesdays from 4 to 7 p.m. The tutors must be able to pass a free Fulton County criminal background check. They must be able to submit an application and they must show some type of commitment, preferably from an hour to three hours each week, and that is to provide some type of consistency in the program. Volunteer tutors will be able to use library resources as a part of their learning tools. To get more information, call Velma Hooker Green at 404-612-9023. All volunteers must undergo a background check. And still to come, citizens weigh in on forming the city of South Fulton. We'll have that story in our district by district coverage next. You're watching Fulton Today. Residents hear from the South Fulton Commissioner about legislation to incorporate his district and the push is on to get coats for women and children who need them. Fulton Chairman John Eves invites the public to help him collect coats for dozens of women and children in the county. The District 1 at Large Commissioner is spearheading an initiative for residents of the Atlanta Day Shelter who are in need of warm coats this winter. I'm very pleased and honored to uh, lead this effort. Uh, homelessness in the Metro Atlanta area is a big uh, chronic problem. On any given day, 10,000 people are homeless and 40% of them are children and women. And so. We're going through the winter months now, and um, so I'm promoting um, um, folks, citizens, community residents to donate clothes, coats specifically, to this effort because we want to make sure that our children are properly clothed and, and are warm during the uh, winter months. Though the official coat drive event is this weekend at the McDonald's on Northside Drive, organizers will not turn coat donations away. 
call the shelter at 404-876-2894 or visit their website at atlantadayshelter.org. District 5 Commissioner M.I. Darnell invites residents to her website to read the transcripts from the recent National Commission on Voting Rights hearing in Atlanta. The Atlanta hearing was held at the King Center and was the first in a series nationwide to collect testimony about voting discrimination and election administration challenges and successes. District 5 seniors attended the hearing to place their concerns about the state's redrawn map of Fulton County districts. Protecting the right to vote is an American citizenship right. No one has the right to remove that. One of the strongest resources which we have in this community, uh, in this county and in this state, is the heritage and history of the struggle for justice and human rights for all people. We are extremely pleased this year to have an opportunity to not only honor a one of the great lives lived during the 20th century, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., but also to have an opportunity by what we do today on behalf of the poor and on behalf of those who still fight for justice to demonstrate that it is our belief that their living has not been in vain. Last year, the Board of Commissioners opposed House Bill 171, stating that it would substantially reduce the ability of minorities to elect candidates of their choice to the Fulton County Board of Commissioners in violation of federal law. And finally, in District 7, as we shared earlier, residents participate in an information and civic engagement session on the future of South Fulton. Commissioner William Bill Edwards hosted the town hall meeting to provide information on incorporation, annexation, and current state legislation. A new bill is before legislators called House Bill 704. The important thing about the meeting tonight is that we're trying to fill in the blanks as to the information that people want. Uh, we had the, the professionals from Fulton County to come in to talk about issues, issues like franchise fees, uh, issues like police, what it costs us. How do we get where we are today and where are we going tomorrow? These details and numbers that we got uh, were insightful, uh, enlightening for us. And um, I also believe that it, it, is, it will put us on track in terms of making a more informed decision than we did. The bill was introduced by State Representative Roger Bruce and if passed, would call for a referendum to incorporate the city of South Fulton. And up next, the flu season is off to a highly infectious and deadly start. We'll talk to medical officials about what you need to know to protect yourself. Watching Fulton today. Portions of the following segment are part of the Fulton County Common Ground Initiative. Common Ground, the county's comprehensive solution to the problem of health disparities in the community. This flu season is proving to be one of the most dangerous in years, and this time it's hitting young adults. FGTV's Lynn Vaughn has our story. The flu is now widespread across the U.S. with 35 states, including Georgia, reporting serious cases. So far this flu season, over 20 people in Georgia have died from flu-related illnesses. Untypically, most of the fatal cases have been among young or middle-aged adults. Fulton County Medical Director Dr. Matthew McKenna says most cases have been the H1N1 strain, the one that hit in 2009. And it's probably re showing up again because, as I said, young people have not been that exposed to it. And as you have people like kids who were in school or preschool, when the original one came around, may not have been exposed. Now they're in school, so it's a set of people that are very susceptible and help spread the virus to others. 
County health officials say even though it's late in the flu season, which lasts from October through March, it is not too late to get a flu shot or the nasal spray. We can see flu all the way through to May, so it's still worthwhile to get a flu shot. It will help protect you in two weeks. And even if it doesn't completely stop you from getting the flu, it makes the disease much shorter and less severe. Dr. McKenna also recommends you wash your hands frequently, sneeze into the inside of your elbow instead of your hands, and stay home if you think you might be getting sick. People are most contagious in a day or two before they get symptoms and for those first three to five days after they start getting symptoms, and that's when they're most contagious. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Lynn Vaughn. Thank you very much, Lynn. Fulton County Health Centers have flu vaccine. Contact our health and wellness department to see what location is nearest you. The shot is just $25. The deadline is nearing to sign up for insurance under the Affordable Health Care Act. The Fulton County Cooperative Extension Service can help you find the health care plan that best suits your needs. You can get one-on-one -on -one assistance on how to navigate the health insurance marketplace website and enroll in a plan. The health navigators are brought in to specifically help someone through the new health marketplace program. So when you go online, it's a new program. It can be intimidating. You can have questions. We have navigators that can help you through that process, just simply signing on all the way through choosing a health plan or helping make the best decision for your family. Now, those who want to participate will need to bring information on your income and have an idea of what your health care needs are. The process takes about an hour. The deadline to enroll for health care through the Affordable Health Care Act is March 31st. If you want to make an appointment, you can call the Fulton County Cooperative Extension Office at 404-613-7670. Fulton officials vote to keep free daycare services at some of the county's health centers. County commissioners approved the $336,000 in funding to keep the services open for 2014. This allows parents who are getting county health services to not have to worry about finding a babysitter. About 4,000 children stayed at the daycares last year. The daycare services are for children six months to 10 years old. The services are provided at the North Fulton Annex Health Clinic, Adamsville Health Center, and the Oak Hill Child, Adolescent, and Family Center. And when we come back, we'll take a look at how young citizens interpret this year's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. Stay with us. You're watching Fulton Today. Starting next month, one popular library branch will close for renovations. On February 1st, a $25 million expansion project will start at the Auburn Avenue Research Library on African American Culture and History. During the closure, a portion of the research collections will be available at the Central Library. The renovations will include adding an auditorium that will seat 240 people. There will also be a writer's lounge that will be used during public readings and book signings. It's also going to have in the gallery space really state-of-the-art display areas so that where we have a gallery now at the Auburn Avenue Research Library, but the experience will be much richer and much more enjoyable for the public. The expansion is expected to be completed in late 2015. And finally, this month, the Southwest Library is having a contest in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The contest has children create an original poster depicting the civil rights icon. The posters will be on display in the library's atrium throughout the month of February. Children are asked to create original works of art um, highlighting the career of Dr. Martin Luther King. They can use any media that they would like. They can paint, they can use newspaper, any type of mixed media to create an original work of art. All posters must be turned in by January 31st. For information, call the Southwest Library Branch at 404-699-6363. And before we go, our reminder that we'd like to hear from you about the stories and programs right here on FGTV. 
Go to our website to take a survey or email or call us. The number 404-612-8317. The email address is fgtv.feedback at fultoncountyga.gov. You can also follow us on twitter.com slash fgtv. Friend us on Facebook and watch us on YouTube. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. I'm Shania Chavis. Thank you for joining us. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County. Thank you.